All right, so there's a single wrist move that all pros or all great golfers use to be consistent. And what that is, is this motion here. There's actually a twist to it. Uh, it's one part that you've probably never heard before. I'll get to that in the second half of this video. But having this wrist angled back and the hands leading in front, that is the key to consistent golf. So I gotta have the hands like this, or that right wrist with this angle, if I wanna play really well. Now, we probably already know that. It's the trick is, what are you getting wrong? What are you trying to do that just won't work if you've tried to do this before and failed? So the key is here, most people, when I talk to them, how do you get this right wrist to be in that, that angled back position like this, the knuckles toward the elbow like that? And most people try to push their hands across their body. So if you imagine my belt buckle in my pants here is the midpoint of my hips, most people are trying to push their hand or push this right wrist across their body to get that angle. You see, if it's on this side of your body, then it's gonna be flat. Well, that's actually wrong. In golf, your hand, your right hand specifically, never gets in front of your belt buckle when you're talking about contact. It's basically impossible to do. And the reason is, as you start to rotate in the downswing, the lower body's leading the way, and it's way ahead of the hands that are way back here. And because it's rotating, it's next to impossible. Actually, I'd venture to say it is impossible to get the hands to catch all the way up and get your right hand on the left side of your belt buckle at contact. Now that's very easy to see when you're looking from this angle. So if I'm hitting the golf ball this way, and I go ahead and set up here to dress, when I come to impact, because the, the lower body's opening up, look how my belt buckle is facing this direction, and my hands are well behind that. They're on the right side of that. My hands are actually in front of my right leg at impact. Now, it may not look like that because the hips are open, so if I go back to face on here again, as I get to contact, my hips open up out of the way, I have my hands what looks like in front of my left leg, but again, in reality, if I turn back this direction so you can see it, they're actually in front of my right leg. So that's the first key, is realizing that the belt buckle has to lead the way. If you wanna get that right wrist angled back, you have to get the belt buckle to be pointing in front of the golf ball when you hit the golf ball. That's piece number one. A little secret to that is this right foot has to come off the ground. Most people don't have the flexibility to keep this right foot on the ground and get their hips to open enough. You can technically do it, but a heck of a lot easier if you get that heel to come off the ground. This little piece of my shoe right here, so if I'm looking at the sole of my shoe, the inside of my toe should be the only piece that's still really touching when I get to contact in a good golf swing. Now from there, the shaft is leaning forward, my right wrist is angled back like that, and I'm in a great position to really get that shaft lane. Now there's a second piece of this that makes it a whole lot easier. I see a lot of people get this wrong too. You know, we have to keep our head behind the golf ball if we wanna play good golf. So we've seen pretty much every pro that's ever played. We get our weight to our left side, our hips open up like we just talked about, but our nose stays behind the golf ball and they get in this angled away position. So a lot of times what players will interpret that as is my right shoulder stays back also and I'm throwing the club from my right shoulder behind the golf ball. Now that's gonna cause you to flip. You see, anytime that I throw, my, my body stops. So maybe your body stops rotating, meaning that this belt buckle isn't in front of the golf ball like we just talked about. I keep the belt buckle back. Now all of a sudden there's no way, again, there's no way to get the hands in front of that belt buckle so what do the hands do? They flip like this, still behind the belt buckle, but now I've had to flip. Same thing with the right shoulder. If I keep it way back, I'm gonna have to throw to be able to reach that golf ball, and I get rid of that right wrist angle that all the pros have. So the second piece of this drill is, I like to have the feeling that yes, you get your weight left, yes, your nose is behind the golf ball, but your right shoulder almost feels like it's going in front of the golf ball when you hit it. So if you just take your your arms across your chest like this, you're gonna be angling these down toward the golf ball or rotated in your posture. So I'm not gonna be able to rotate level like this. If my shoulder starts to go farther forward, all of a sudden, that's a big over the top. That's me sliding in front of the golf ball like this. But if I angle it down this way, that right shoulder can go farther and farther forward, and now the hands can get in front. And I like to have the feeling that the club head stays behind the shoulder. So Anything on, anything on this side would be that, that bowing of the wrist, or that cup, uh, flipping of the wrist. The club head is on this side of my right shoulder. 
anytime that wrist is angled back, the club head is on that side of my right shoulder. And again, the hands are gonna be about right here at impact. This is what I like to feel like. I like to feel like the club head is behind my right shoulder and I simply stay in my posture and rotate on through. Again, my head can stay behind it. All that can stay back, but I want this shoulder moving forward as much as possible. And the feeling that the club stays behind that shoulder all the way to contact, and then it can release out in front of that. That's a feeling. In reality, the right shoulder will actually be on that side of the golf ball at, at impact. Uh, you're not gonna be able to get your shoulder that far in front, but I think that's a great exaggeration. When I make a good swing like this, I feel like it stays there the whole time, almost like I'm tossing a golf ball, the shoulder's leading the way, and then my hand releases after that. Now, there's one more piece of this that's really important. If you stand up out of your posture, so if you're used to going this way and flipping the club, not only does that right wrist need to be angled back like that, but the club needs to be angled more up. You see, if I back away from the golf ball, I'm getting farther from it. And what'll happen is I have to flip my hands down this direction, so my wrist will be angled down like that. And now all of a sudden I'm standing up out of my posture and I'm gonna flip. You see, if I'm standing up out of my posture, I also can't get shaffling because I wouldn't even be able to reach the ball. The more shaffling you get, the shorter the club gets essentially to the ground. So the last piece here is angle that wrist back and then cock your wrist up a little bit. So if I had the club in my hands, this would be right wrist angled back, club head outside my shoulder. This would be that standing up early extension. This would be staying down in my posture. So feeling like the wrist keeps a little cup here. Again, in reality, this is a feeling. It's not exactly what's gonna happen, but if you can do that, now all of a sudden, that club shaft is on a shallower plane, right? This club is sitting shallower here. I'm gonna get more solid contact, and man, I'm in the position just like the pros. If you ever get toe down divots or toe deeper divots, that's exactly what's happening. You're not having this little up motion of the right arm. So put those three tips together, and man, you're gonna have a, the right wrist angles just like the tour pros. All right, happy with that one. Now, there is one more piece. You'll notice on both those shots that I just hit, the ball drew back. And a lot of times what players will do when they try to get the shaft lane is they'll hit a ball and it won't draw like this. It'll actually get a little right wrist angle back. That ball will start to the right and then go even further to the right. It's incredibly frustrating. And the reason for this is the pros are doing something different when they try to square up the face. Even if you try to do everything we did here, if you think of rolling your forearms over each other to square up the club face, that's gonna be a problem. We have to learn to square the club face like the pros, which is what I call the anti-roll method. That's now a nice square face, which I'll go over in this video. So I'll play a preview of that here in a second. It's gonna explain in detail exactly why we don't wanna roll it, what is to be expected, all the problems it can cause, and then we start to get into the solution of how you fix it once and for all. Just click the card that you see pop up on the screen, anywhere on the screen, click the card there to see that full video. Don't worry if you don't see that card, go down to the link down below in the description. There'll be a link there where you can get instant access to this anti-roll method video from there too. So I can't wait to share it with you. Let's go ahead and get started right now. So here's the bottom line. If you've been taught to roll the club in the early downswing, that causes the shaft to get steep. And that steep club causes all your problems. It causes you to hit it way behind the big hitters and way inconsistent with your quality of strikes. So you're in the tall grass and the trees and the hazards all day long. Now the great news is this, there's really only two pieces that you need to know to fix all these problems. The first one is we need to learn the proper way to square up the club face. Instead of rolling the forearms and getting steep, there's another way that the pros do this. Once you learn this right way to square up the club face, then you can shallow out from the inside and everything starts to fit together. Now I'm gonna teach you this right now in what I call the anti-roll method. You may also hear this called the motorcycle move or the tour twist, but let's walk through exactly how to do that. Now what I want you to do is go ahead and go kind of in the last parallel in the downswing. So here, I want my hips to go ahead and be opening up. I want my club to be parallel with the ground and I want my hands to be in front of my right thigh. Now when I take my grip, you're gonna notice that when I do this, the club face is basically straight up and down. So if I'm looking at it from this angle, You'll see the face is straight up and down, and my logo of my glove is pointed out in front of me. Now from there... 